Okay, it's time to uh, start on this electrical restoration on this little neat Olympic 502 from 1946. I've got the uh, Howard W. Sams photo fact in front of me, and I'll be using that for reference in lieu of my uh, writer schematic. This one's uh, crystal clear, so should make it uh, simple and easy to follow. I'm going to uh, start out the restoration by uh, getting rid of this multi-section electrolytic capacitor here. And then I'll tackle the, um, the other caps in here. And just for giggles, what I may do is uh, replace this one electrolytic uh, capacitor and then bring the radio up. Possibly, but uh, I'm not sure if I really want to do that or not. I got one end of this capacitor here blown out, so we'll see. Um, another thing um, that I do, and I'm sure a lot of a lot of folks out there do, that uh, they've got all their stuff uh, organized. So uh, this is just one tray of six trays of different components. So I've got all my electrolytic capacitors here, and then I've got some grommets, uh, a taper. Uh, some terminal strips, uh, some spacers in this particular one, but again I've got uh, I think six of these uh, in total. Uh, three for my capacitors and then another three plus for uh, resistors and other type of hardware. So let me reference the uh, schematic here for this multi-section um, capacitor we'll see what's actually been installed. Again, I can tell this has been replaced at some point in time. And we'll compare this to what the schematic shows for. Then I'll, I'll salvage through my uh, parts here and get the correct electrolytic and then we'll decide uh, how I want to move forward for mounting that since it's a, again a two-section uh, electrolytic uh, capacitor. If I'll use a terminal strip or what. So. Uh, let me uh, take a look at that real quick. Okay, I cut the uh, strap right here that was holding the electrolytic down into the uh, chassis itself. And again, this has been replaced at some point in time. Um, the uh, schematic itself calls for a dual electrolytic capacitor, uh, 40 microfarads on each side, uh, rated at 150 volts. And I'll just go back with uh, 160s, but what we have installed, I'm not, again, I'm not sure if it shows up on camera or not, but uh, you've got the uh, red section here is at uh, 50 uh, microfarads, and the green uh, appears to be at 30. And again, of course, your black, here's your common uh, lead, which attaches here. So um, let me get the uh, soldering iron heated up here and get these connections uh, removed as well as validate uh, the connection points for accuracy as well. Yeah, I wanted to take just a minute and show you the schematic here. Um, again, you've got the uh, capacitor again, which is a multi-section uh, 6, 6A. And it's hard to read this, but if you look at the uh, parts description, it does show for a, a, a 40 microfarad, again, rated at 150 volts, and again, which is common for an All-American 5. Uh, it sits, uh, you know, on each side of the uh, speaker fill coil, which acts as a choke um, to help filter out um, and smooth out the, uh, the DC, uh, feeding the, uh, the uh, B-plus side of the, uh, the radio. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of uh, clipping this out real quick. Uh, I did validate that the uh, connection points are correct here. Um, the uh, one side, the red lead, um, ties back to the 8 of the uh, rectifier. And then the power uh, audio output tube uh, number 4 for the other lead. And uh, so it is wired in correctly. Um, always validate that if you're doing these restorations. Just don't assume if you're replacing the parts, uh, you put them back where they were at because they may not be accurate. Uh, been there, done that. So uh, anyway, let me just clip these leads and uh, I want to check the uh, resistance of this speaker uh, fuel coil um, here and just see if we get somewhere around 450 ohms of uh, resistance. 
Okay, let's uh, again check this uh, speaker fill coil, see what we get. Again, the schematic shows around 450 of ohms. I've always found those to be uh, plus or minus uh, 10 to 20 percent. So let's uh, give that a check here and see what we've got. Again, uh, I've already validated the uh, connection point, so all I'm doing, again, I'm going to connect uh, one lead here to uh, pin 8 on the uh, rectifier tube and then on the output tube, uh, pin number 4. So it'll be the green and the red uh, connection points here. And again, uh, what we're looking for is around uh, 450 ohms, and uh, we look good. So you can see 0 0.460, 0 0.456, uh, almost spot on the uh, schematic. So that's great. Um, I was a little bit concerned about the, uh, the speaker uh, fill coil being open. It looked a little toasty. So, uh, of course, just because we're ohming it out and it tests good on the DC resistance doesn't uh, mean it's good. So uh, let me go ahead and get this, uh, take a look at how I'm going to mount the uh, new electrolytic uh, capacitors here real quick off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, here's what I elected to uh, do. I cut this uh, strap off and I removed uh, this little small fastener here. And again, this was a, uh, a number six screw and I put another new number six screw back through here. And again, this uh, other end of this uh, wax capacitor here will need to be grounded when it's replaced as well. But I'll just use this terminal strip in uh, this fashion and mount it here. Let me get my hands out of the way. And then we'll mount the new electrolytic capacitors here uh, back down to their connection points and uh, route the, uh, the new wire from the uh, rectifier tube back over as well. So um, let me do that off camera and I'll be right back. I think one more tip to these uh, terminal strips, most of them I noticed never really solder up really, really well. So um, I've got some scotch Bright uh, pad that I use and I'll just go over these uh, real well. I think this is equivalent to uh, 4 alt steel wool. And um, you know you can do a use an X-Acto knife or razor. Uh, do the same thing. All I'm doing is just uh, scuffing them up a little bit so I get a nice uh, electrical connection. Okay, I've got the uh, terminal strip mounted here, and I really don't need uh, these three uh, different connections. Um, this particular connection here, uh, which is the, I believe that's the 12SQ7, this is actually the uh, ground connection, and that ground connection goes back to chassis, uh, according to the schematic, and I also uh, checked my uh, DC resistance to just confirm that. So. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to double up though. I'm going to go ahead and take this existing connection here and tie it back to the center point and just make certain that I've got uh, a nice chassis ground. If this should ever come loose, uh, then I'm safeguarded by this connection here back to the uh, terminal strip itself. Now, when I was checking my uh, capacitor values, go figure out what I've got is uh, 50 microfarad uh, 160. So. I'm going to increase the value um, to, uh, from 40s to 50s, and hopefully that won't hurt the uh, operation or drive too much uh, DC voltage, but we'll find out. But I'll actually be looping this. I've already um, started doing some desoldering here on the uh, 50L6 tube, and I'll put some uh, heat shrink here on this particular capacitor and uh, just route it uh, um, as so with the uh, value facing uh, toward me uh, back to this center connection. So let me get that done. Something else that comes in uh, real handy that I find myself using often for uh, you know shrink and other things is uh, just a little small micro torch. Uh, again just to uh, apply just a little bit of heat here and uh, create some adhesion here between the uh, 
the heat shrink tubing here in the lead, the positive lead of this uh, electrolytic capacitor. Okay, I've got the uh, new electrolytic uh, capacitors actually in and mounted. And again, you can see I came from uh, pin 8 of the uh, 35Z5 rectifier here. And again, that's my uh, plus lead. And then back to uh, ground. And again, I'm double grounded here. Uh, this is a chassis ground, and again, I confirmed that as I noted earlier. And uh, same thing for here, I'm coming off of the uh, 50L6 uh, pin number 4 on the positive lead. And then the uh, two negative leads again are uh, tied back together. Uh, these two are unused right now. Again, if I had the uh, appropriate uh, just one lug uh, terminal strip, that's what I would have used. But uh, this served my uh, purpose well. So let me go ahead and tackle some of these other uh, uh, wax capacitors here. And I might wire up a temporary AC line and uh, just power this thing up real quick. I, well, you know what, I'll just go ahead and replace the rest of these uh, even before I check any of the uh, resistor values. We'll see what we got and I'll be right back. Okay, up next I'm going to uh, tackle this 0 0.05 microfarad capacitor, get it out of the circuit when I'm two. I'm going to go ahead and lift this one lead here from the, uh, from the tube socket so I can validate uh, this resistor here. It's uh, a 220 ohm uh, resistor, one watt. And it's not uh, like crazy uh, discolored, but uh, I just want to see if it's been uh, exercised at some point where it may be reading high now out of tolerance so we'll give it a check in just a moment and see what we've got so let me go ahead and get the uh, soldering iron over here get this uh, 0 0.05 out and again lift this one uh, lead off of this uh, resistor here one other thing I wanted to mention real quick is uh, in this case I've got to apply uh, right much heat probably uh, to get this uh, connection right here loose, it's wrapped around. So I do have a heat sink here placed on the uh, resistor itself. Uh, again, that's just not to overheat the resistor and cause any additional stress on the uh, resistor it's, uh, itself. Well, for sure the uh, 220 ohm resistor, 1 watt resistor, had been under stress. So again, uh, just to safeguard, I did use uh, you know, a heat sink on this one side, and uh, I just couldn't work this thing loose without uh, risking, you know, messing up the uh, tube socket itself. So uh, I actually cut the uh, other lead here off of the uh, rectifier tube, which just loops around here between uh, two different uh, terminal locations. And uh, the resistor broke in too. Before it did, though, I checked the resistor. Uh, in circuit and it read about uh, you know 55,000 ohms and it basically just fell apart in my hands so um, I'm assuming with the uh, electrolytic capacitors at some point uh, uh, probably uh, shorted um, it put excessive load here on the uh, on the resistor and uh, caused it to uh, overheat and uh, so it's seen better days so let me go ahead and uh, grab another uh, 220 ohm resistor, one watt. Hopefully I've got something very, very close to that. Get that uh, soldered in as well as get the uh, 0.05 microfarad uh, capacitor uh, tied back in from here to ground as well. I had mentioned my uh, organizers for the capacitors and again uh, ditto for the resistors and um, again there's uh, three or four of these with uh, various resistor values. So in this case again I don't have an exact 220 ohm. I'm not going to worry about that. I'll just go with the 200 ohm because that will get me uh, extremely close when I look at a tolerance of uh, you know plus or minus uh, 20%.
So one thing I like to do um, again before I actually solder the uh, new resistors in place is to uh, check the uh, resistor value and again you can see here it's extremely close uh, about 200 uh, right at 200 ohms just like it says so again I'll be substituting this one watt uh, 200 ohm resistor for the uh, 220 ohm uh, that was on the schematic itself let me get that placed in the circuit as well as that 0 0.05 microfarad capacitor okay as you can see I've got the uh, new resistor here in uh, the 200 ohm in lieu of the uh, 220 ohm now this particular uh, tube socket uh, terminal was right crowded so what I did was loop the uh, resistor lead through and for the uh, 0 0.05 microfarad capacitor replacement here I'm going to uh, use the coil method so again my uh, normal approach for that is to uh, kind of visualize where I want the capacitor again this other lead here will connect to the ground so uh, I'll have it placed somewhere here in the middle um, between the two electrolytics uh, would be desirable or somewhere up in this area probably makes more sense because that was the original routing here so uh, kind of eyeballing this um, I'll actually uh, put a little bit of uh, black or yellow uh, shrink on between these two locations and then I'll use my uh, screwdriver right here and do the coil method so uh, let me cut a little piece of uh, shrink right here just between these two sections and then uh, I'll be right back okay I've got my uh, heat shrink on both leads now and I'm going to route the uh, capacitor in this direction where the value itself will be running uh, kind of left to right so um, I'm going to just take my uh, screwdriver here and uh, just run the uh, lead around it again to create this coil method and I'll cut this off and then uh, apply a little bit of pressure here and uh, move this around now you can kind of see if you can see that on camera then uh, we'll place that uh, right over here and I'll solder that in so it kind of gives you an idea here of the uh, of the coil method again I elected to do that uh, just due to uh, you know the other uh, leads and stuff that are dressed back to this particular uh, point on the tube socket itself I think it's going to make it uh, much cleaner and I don't have to risk of uh, overheating or twisting or breaking the uh, the tube socket okay I've got the uh, the new uh, resistor in here again I substituted a, uh, a 200 ohm resistor for the 220 ohm 1 watt resistor that was there and also got the uh, 0 0.05 microfarad capacitor uh, in here as well and routed back on this uh, front plane of the uh, the chassis so uh, turned out extremely neat again I used the coil method in this area and again that was to eliminate any possibility of uh, breaking off the uh, the uh, the terminal there from the uh, the tube socket which was a little under stress so no need to uh, go through that hassle so uh, let me go ahead and move over here now and get this other uh, resistor uh, replaced this may actually be a uh, safety uh, cap can't tell I'll look at the schematic and again the end of this one's blown out completely so let me uh, review the schematic and uh, see what value uh, should be here and uh, we'll get that one swapped out okay I got this uh, 0 0.01 microfarad uh, capacitor here replaced um, in the circuit uh, it's uh, connected here to the uh, 50L6 I also took advantage I'm not sure if you can actually see that on camera or not but there's also a uh, resistor um, here and I've also uh, checked that value and uh, it reads good should be about uh, I think 120 ohms reads 127 so uh, let me move on to this capacitor here and then I'll check this resistor value here as well
Oh, by the way, I wanted to show that uh, capacitor that I replaced. It was a uh, solar, but you can see uh, the condition it's in, the end of it's uh, blown open. So I'm sure that would have been uh, problematic for sure. Okay, I got this next uh, capacitor here replaced, and it was another 0 .01, uh, which was, you know, equal to this uh, value that I just had replaced here. And uh, I used the uh, coil method again, uh, just again not to uh, stress these uh, tube socket uh, connections here. So let me move on over here and. Um, Oh, by the way, I did check uh, this resistor value here, too, on the schematic. It should uh, read 470 ohms. It read uh, 469, so we're in good shape here. I'm going to go ahead and move over to uh, this part of the uh, circuit. I'm going to forego these capac uh, capacitors for now, and uh, let me focus on this wax capacitor here and uh, get it out of the circuit. The uh, remaining capacitors have now been replaced and all of the uh, resistors have been checked and everything is in tolerance. Again, only one bad resistor. I've got a new line cord on the uh, radio. Um, I did correct uh, one mistake. I should have put a safety cap in here and that's now been uh, completed. So uh, I'm going to take this uh, chassis outside, put a dust mask on and uh, blow the underneath side out. And then I'm going to uh, fire up the old tube tester here, give these uh, tubes a check, and uh, we'll get them back installed, assuming they're good, and uh, we'll give the uh, old radio a fire up on the uh, Variac and see what happens.